Hello, people of the internet. My name is Johnny. Welcome back to yet another FNAF news. We've got a very, very juicy episode for today. A whole bunch of very exciting news, ranging from actual FNAF movie news. That's right, we finally got some good news, and it's pretty... Sorry, there's a fly. Just, I don't know if you can see him. He's just flying around me. Actual, amazing, fantastic, huge news on the movie. And also, if you're a book enjoyer, we got a bunch of books coming out in the next couple years. Yes, that's right, years. So buckle up, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel if you're new. We talk about FNAF news all the gosh dang time. Let's hop into it. Kicking it off with some book news, we got our first preview of the upcoming character encyclopedia book. So it's basically the Freddy Files books, but it talks about each individual character in depth. And as you can see, we got two pages. The first one shows off Helpy's page with a brand new render of Helpy at the bottom. Bottom. And then we have a page showing off the toy animatronics and a FNAF 1 newspaper also on the same page. From the games to the novels and short stories, all the characters are here with over 200 pages of full color art. So that is the character encyclopedia. Now moving on to Tales from the Pizzaplex, we got some pretty big news. First up, we have the official cover for the fifth book, The Bobby Dot's Conclusion. And as you can see, it features a terrifying skeleton, endoskeleton, like Terminator character. He's got a whole bunch of wires hanging out of him. It's, it's terrifying. But what's even more interesting is that we also got the title and cover for the sixth Tales from the Pizzaplex book. As you can see, this is Nexi. Looks like it's gonna be another animatronic doll character. A lot of people are saying it's an animatronic human. I don't know how a human would have that <laughs> pronounce of a chin. I don't know, maybe dreams in this book. But I, d I definitely don't think it's gonna be an animatronic human. This looks like a doll. Moving on to some even crazier news, Scholastic actually confirmed six brand new books. You got the FNAF cookbook releasing it next year in 2023, which was actually teased back on the FNAF subreddit like two years ago. Someone left a post saying we need a FNAF cookbook and Scott was like, hey, that's a good idea. Let me actually uh, email Scholastic. So we got that book finally coming out. We also have Tales from the Pizzaplex number eight and number nine, releasing in September 2023 and January 2024, respectfully. And then we have three other graphic novels for Fazbear Frights coming out in September 2023, January 2024, and September 2024. So absolutely crazy. It looks like we can expect FNAF books up until the tail end of 2024. That's crazy. I'm very excited about the cookbook. I'm interested to see where Tails is gonna go. The graphic novels, I like the first one. I think it was pretty good. The second one, nah, the previews don't have me that optimistic. But what has everyone excited about the third graphic novel in particular is that we actually know who's going to be illustrating them. And someone who people are especially excited to see is Diana Camiro, because she worked on the illustrations for the fourth closet graphic novel, which everyone absolutely loves. So Diana and everyone else, welcome aboard, welcome back. And we got a lot of books to look forward to. Taking a quick pit stop at Pop Goes Evergreen, we got a bit of news on that game. First up, Kane showed off another scrapped phone case. This time it was the jukebox phone case. He said, very cool in theory, but way too ambitious. Not only was it animated and utterly huge, but it was also going to let you play music from Pop Goes Arcade. It was just a bit too much. He also released a full devlog, and apparently it's going to be doing weekly devlogs for the Popco series. I'll leave the full devlog link down below if you want to go read through the entire thing. The Popco's Evergreen section reassures fans that progress on the game is steadily moving forward, talking about how they're working on environments and that other set of animatronics we talked about in a previous FNAF news video, and briefly touching upon the trading cards and unlockable phone cases in the game. Popco's Arcade is apparently getting yet another Another update, that's always good to hear. Fixing some bugs, adding an escape menu with volume control, and we can hopefully expect to see it during this month of October. And the final section talks about Kane being a Game Jolt creator now. And what I'm most excited about, he says, I'm in contact with a couple of merch companies for future fanverse products, like Hex. The Pop Goes Hex plushie has been fully designed and it looks awesome. Another Pop Goes product from a different company may also be available later this year but I can't talk about that just yet. That's quick update on Pop Goes Evergreen. Now, let's move on to some U2's news. Because boy, oh boy, we got a lot. U2's held another AMA on their Reddit, and we got answers to a bunch of FNAF questions. But first up, they revealed in their Discord that Circus Baby will eventually be getting a figure. But first, 
they're gonna be making a second Vanny figure. How exciting. Moving on now to the AMA. I'm actually gonna use this graphic that came through together. So once again, shout out to Kane. First and foremost, they announced that more Fanverse products are coming. That they might do a collab with Hex, but it's undetermined right now. They have no plans of making figures or plushies or any items of any Fazbear Fright characters. At least not right now. The Withered characters are currently in progress. They're officially making a Burn Trap figure. When asked about the toys, they said who knows, so... Maybe some point down the line we can see some toy YouTube figures. They might be planning some more FNAF plushies. The Perp Guy figure will be releasing later this year. You never know to Fanverse plushies. I would love some Fanverse plushies, by the way, YouTubes. The pin set we saw teased in a previous FNAF News video and some other things are coming out later this year. And they said perhaps XD to a Balloon Boy figure. So a whole bunch of YouTubes news, a whole bunch of stuff to look forward to. Baby, version 2 of Vanny, Burn Trap, the Purple Guy figure, more plushies, the pins, like, there's so much stuff to look forward to with YouTubes, it's crazy. But, finally, let's move on to the topic you've all been waiting for, the FNAF movie. Because we finally got some news, and it's crazy, crazy good news. So, not wasting any more time, this is Jason's announcement he put out yesterday. He said, Jim Henson's Creature Shop is working on our animatronics, we knew that. Emma Tammy is our director, we'll talk about her in a quick second, but most importantly, filming on the FNAF movie starts in September of 2023. That is only four months away. This is very, very exciting good news. And I know some people just based off the track record of this film are still kind of hesitant, but I think, I think we're in the clear at this point. I think it's finally actually happening. Because unlike previously, where they're like, meh, I kind of like the script, maybe we can fix it up a bit though, here's 20 other scripts, and the director, Chris Columbus, is like, you know guys, you're, you sure are taking, wow, you're taking your time on the scripts, I'm gonna, I'm gonna dip out actually. It doesn't seem like it's like that anymore, right? They got major names behind the project, Jim Henson's Creature Shop. That's insane. They finally got a director. Again, we'll talk about her in a second because I know a lot of people are kind of jumping on her case. And this is the second time we've had a proper filming release. Release period. Like, this seems like we're in the clear. It seems like we're finally in the home stretch. And I know we said that like two years ago when Scott said they were filming in, in like, I think it was spring of 2021. But I, I'm pretty sure, I don't know, I just don't see why he would hype it up all this much and then, and then just oopsies there's there's still struggles behind the scenes i think i think this is finally it and just to have a bit more information on the fnaf movie the script was written by scott cawthon obviously great that he was involved emma of course the director and also a fella named seth cudback and just to give a bit of context on seth if you don't know who he is some other projects he's written for have an 8.8 .8 and 6.7 out of 10 ratings i think that's pretty good but now let's focus on emma because i think that's where a lot of people especially on twitter were like i don't know about this person it's not a big name you know like <laughs> director i don't know who this is they looked at her imdb and the only movie she was like directly involved in directing has a 5.6 now thankfully if you look at some of the comments on like reviews of that movie they say it was pretty well shot it was very well directed so I have faith in Emma. And actually, so does Scott. He left a comment saying, In meeting with Emma, I felt she had a great understanding of the franchise. And really felt that she could craft something that would please the fan base and keep people on the edge of their seats. Emma herself chiming in, saying, Stepping into the rich, terrifying world of Freddy's. Alongside Scott, Blumhouse, and the Jim Henson's Creature Shop is beyond thrilling. I cannot wait for audiences to immerse themselves in the wild and wonderful playground we are creating. Now, don't get me wrong. I understand how easy it is to look at her IMDb, see a movie that only ranked in like a couple tens of thousands of dollars, have a middle of the ground rating and go, uh, I don't know. I'm not too confident in this. I understand where the criticism lies. But I also think coming from Scott, who again, let's remind ourselves, has been making this film as perfect as it can be in his mind for seven years at this point. If he can trust someone like Emma, who, as he said, has a very, very clear understanding and vision for the franchise in this film, I'd say let's give her a chance. I think it, people jumped 
to conclusions so, so fast, and, and that's crazy to me. But at the end of the day, I'd love to hear your guys' stance on this. Are you still even excited for the FNAF movie? How do you feel about Emma as the director? How do you feel about three people writing the screenplay? I, I think I saw some criticism on that. Though I am very excited because, uh, I forgot to mention this, Russell Binder, who works at Striker Entertainment, which, if you don't know, is basically owns FNAF, the FNAF license, is the executive producer. So a lot of people directly involved with this project are very, very close with FNAF. Scott wrote the script, Russell is the executive producer, Emma is very, very understanding of the franchise. I'd say we're in good hands. I know Jason in the past has said, oh yeah, it's definitely gonna be, you know, next year, 2023. I think, because we thought they would be filming at the end of this year, turns out that's not true, it's not until February, I, I'm thinking now it's going to be an early 2024 release. I think they're probably going to try and push for October, November of next year, but I, I hope they push it back because I would hate for them to rush through filming or editing or anything like that. But that's going to do it for the FNAF movie news and also this FNAF news video overall. Thank you so much. Once again, tell me your thoughts on the FNAF movie news in the comments down below, and I'll see you all on the flip side. Goodbye.